so hello students in this lecture uh, we will take important topic of the second chapter that is boundary conditions between conductor and free space so in exam uh, derive boundary conditions between conductor and free space such a type of a question is asked so we have to derive so derivations are also important in this uh, we can get fixed marks in exam when problems uh, you are you are becoming uh, unable to solve in the exam then this derivation helps to score the subject and cover up the your marks so uh, this is a boundary conditions for conductor and free space so this this is also called as a boundary conditions for electrostatics okay in the next third chapter there are uh, uh, another boundary conditions that is the boundary conditions for magnetostatics so in this lecture we will study boundary conditions between conductor and free space for electrostatics okay so this figure we have to consider and this figure is uh, important so understand this figure so we have to find out boundary conditions so this is a boundary this is a boundary then this is a free space above the this line this upper portion is a free space and uh, lower portion is a conductor okay so next here some components are mentioned dn dt then en et we have to mention those components that is a, what is d d is a electric flux density and n means normal component so normal component of electric flux density denoted by dn and tangential component of electric flux density is denoted by dt then normal component of electric field intensity is denoted by en and tangential component is denoted by et okay then consider this rectangular box that is a a b c d here this is a del w is a length from a to b and this b to c is a height or we can denote it as a del h or we can also denote it as a del l any notation we can denote but uh, this height is divided into two parts that is del h or del l is divided into b to b dash and next b dash to c here c to d is same then next d to d dash and d dash to a means uh, lens b to c and d to a are divided that is uh, they are some portion is on under the conductor and some portion is uh, above the conductor or in a free space therefore they are divided okay here also we have to mention here uh, for finding uh, normal components of electric field intensity and flux density we have to consider the gaussian surface so for gaussian surface we have to consider a cylindrical gaussian surface here to find the boundary conditions so one by one we will solve uh, boundary conditions its proof so before starting proof we will mention theoretical explanation that is the uh, external electric field intensity is decomposed in two components one is a tangential and one is a normal to the conductor surface as we have mentioned this is a tangential and this is a normal this is a tangential this is a normal component the tangential component of e should be zero if it is not zero a tangential force should be applied to the surface charge and non static condition will occur for static condition the tangential component of e bar and d bar are zero consider a closed path a b c d a so consider this path a b c d a to move a unit positive charge along this closed path work is not required and hence closed integral edl is equal to zero therefore closed integral edl we can denote it as integral as a integral a to b edl plus integral uh, b to c that is integral a to b b to c okay then d to uh, means c to d as a clockwise job a to b integral b to c c to d and again d to a 
ఇదిగోండి ఏ టు ఏ టు బి బి టు సి సి టు డి డి టు ఏ ఈడిఎల్ ఓకే విచ్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో హియర్ ఇంటిగల్ యాజ్ ప్రీవియస్లీ మెన్షన్ దిస్ లెంత్ బిసి అండ్ దిస్ డిఏ ఈజ్ డివైడ్ ఇన్ టు అగైన్ టూ పార్ట్స్ దట్ ఈస్ బి టు బి డాష్ దర్ ఫర్ ఇంటిగల్ బి టు బి డాష్ హియర్ మెన్షన్ అండ్ ఆల్సో బి డాష్ టు సి హియర్ బి డాష్ టు C and this length is also divided that is d to d dash and d dash to a that is a d to d dash and d dash to a edl here the path b dash c dc and d dash d are inside the conductor and electric field does not exist inside the conductor so this sentence is important the path b dash c so this b dash c then d to c this d to c b dash c then c to d or d to so dc or d d to d dash are inside the conductor so these are the inside the conductor therefore there is electric field does not exist inside the conductor so these terms gets cancel that is a uh, b dash to c integral gets cancel then c to d integral gets cancel then d to d dash integral gets cancel so the only remaining integrals zero i mean a to b edl we have to solve a to b edl how to solve a to b edl here a to b edl a to b path is as shown in this figure as this length is going along this side then component of electric field intensity uh, along this side that is a tangential component comes et so this et comes therefore et into del w del w kya hai this is a length that is the length between a or distance between a and b is denoted by del w therefore this term comes et del w then next integral b to b dash this b to b dash okay so this uh, if you go clockwise on downward direction it is going therefore negative sign comes as we are going downward direction means no uh, here which component comes normal component comes okay therefore minus of en del l by 2 why del l by 2 total length is a del l or del h half length will get del l by 2 half of del l is a del l by 2 therefore minus of en del by 2 term is here then remaining integral some integrals are zero then integral d dash to a t dash to a यहां से या तो अपर साइड जा रहा है नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट रहेगा एंड व्हिच इज अ पॉजिटिव देयरफॉर ई एन डेल एल बाय 2 हियर इफ यू ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली दिस माइनस ई एन डेल एल बाय 2 एंड प्लस एनी ई एन डेल एल बाय 2 गेट्स कैंसिल देन 0 इज इक्वल टू विल गेट ई टी डेल डब्ल्यू यू कैन राइट ई टी इज इक्वल टू 0 डेल डब्ल्यू गोस दिस साइड देन ई टी इज इक्वल टू 0 from this equation we can say that tangential component of electric field intensity is a zero then after finding tangential component of electric field intensity we will find tangential component of electric flux density so we can find the tangential component of electric flux density so electric flux density is denoted by dt is equal to epsilon 0 et therefore dt is equal to 0 why dt is equal to 0 in the previous case we have uh, solved et is equal to 0 as et is equal to 0 we will get dt is equal to 0 therefore uh, here two equations will uh, will get that is the first we have find out tangential component of electric field intensity which is a 0 and uh, also tangential component of magnetic field intensity dt is equal to 0 these two boundary conditions we have find till now okay then as we have find out tangential component next we have to find out the normal component now normal okay so to finding the normal component this is a derivation second part from this uh, from no, yeah, say, second part start we have find out tangential component now we have to find out the normal component okay so we will find normal components 
so this is the second part so find to finding the normal component let us consider a cylindrical gaussian surface as shown in this figure so we have to consider this cylindrical gaussian surface to find the normal component so we have to apply gauss law and according to gauss law we know that charge in close is equal to close integral d bar ds bar here uh, integral d bar ds bar is divided into again uh, four integrals that is integral top plus integral bottom plus uh, side surface in free space plus side surface in conductor side surface in free space side surface in conductor so all these integrals are added as shown in this equation top plus bottom plus side plus side surface in conductor as the bottom surface of cylinder and some part of side surface is within the conductor there is a no charge this is the important sentence side surface within the conductor and uh, bottom surface in the cylinder cylinder and some part of side surface in the, is a, within the conductor and there is no charge inside the conductor hence second and fourth term, term of above equation is a zero so say if second and fourth term is a zero then we'll uh, uh, write down equation that is a uh, q is equal to integral top d bar ds bar plus integral side surface in free space d bar ds bar since differential length del l is very very less than del w the area of side surface is negligible this area is a uh, negligible therefore this term is also gets cancelled therefore next q is equal to top d bar ds bar means if you observe cylindrical surface like in the previous surface we have to consider only this top surface and we have to apply the gauss law for top surface so um, we will solve this integral what is the value of integral then q is equal to dn del s why do i need dn here if we observe from upper side then which which is a normal component and del s is a incremental surface area therefore equation becomes or integral becomes dn del s okay since we know that q is equal to rho s del s one of the relation we have to recall generally q in terms of surface charge density is given by q is equal to rho s del s or q is equal to rho s ds we can say that then compare these equation two equations that is a dn dn del s is equal to rho s del s okay so this del s and this del s gets cancelled then we will get dn is equal to rho s dn is equal to rho s the normal component of electric field intensity is dn is equal to epsilon 0 en so we know that relation between d and e what is the relation between d and e d is equal to epsilon e but in terms of normal component we can write d n is equal to epsilon 0 e n which is equal to rho s we can write down like this therefore find the value of e n here from this equation find the value therefore e n is equal to rho s upon this term goes to this side e n is equal to rho s upon epsilon 0 this equation we will get okay so we have find out the normal component of electric field intensity which is en is equal to rho s upon epsilon 0 and uh, dn is equal to kya component I have? rho s okay or dn is equal to epsilon 0 en is equal to rho s so in this derivation we have find out the boundary conditions between conductor and free space so uh, uh, first we have find out the boundary conditions for um for uh, tangential component of electric flux density and uh, electric field intensity okay so we have got uh, these four conditions that is a uh, first uh, we have find out et is equal to zero then dt is equal to zero dt is equal to zero these equations we have find out 
and uh, next we have find out dn is equal to epsilon 0 en is equal to rho s and en is equal to rho s upon epsilon 0 this this is a normal component of electric flux density and this is a normal component of electric field intensity the electric flux leaves the conductor in a direction normal to the surface and the value of electric flux density is normally equal to the surface charge density value of electric flux density is numerically equal to the surface charge density that is a rho s so these uh, um, boundary conditions we have derived in this lecture so stop here thank you so in exam practice this derivation so that you can write uh, this derivation or solve this derivation easily and also recall in the exam okay